Executive Order, they can call the uh, City of Peru Common Council meeting for October 7th uh, quarter. Uh, we'll have the Pledge of Allegiance led by Councilman Lee and invocation by Councilman Tom Gustin. With us tonight as we're conducting city business give us the wisdom to make the right decisions give us the strength to use that wisdom to make those decisions we pray this in jesus name amen, amen. thank you tom uh, we'll, we'll call holland here gustin here lee here ramsey here bowman langwell here krauskopf yes here Okay. Uh, next, we have the reading and correcting of the journal. Move we suspend the rules and dispense with reading and correcting of the journal. Second. It's been moved by Councilman Crosscoff and seconded by Councilman Gustin to dispense the rules and dismissal of the reading and correcting of the journal. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Uh, communications? Chair, we want to report tonight. I sure tonight. For the Free Civic Center, September 2019. Total number of guests served is 284. Meals, 94 meals. Meal um, amount is $962. Rent was $256. Um, catering brought in $1,078. Um, total paid to the city is $358. Thank you. That's it. Okay, very good. Thank you. Okay, so we move on to unfinished business. We have Ordinance 16, 2019. Ordinance 16, 2019, an ordinance for additional appropriations. I move we adopt Ordinance 16, 2019. It's been moved by Councilman Crosscoff and seconded by Councilman Gustin to uh, adopt Ordinance 16, 2019. And this is for, again, it says the... This, it, this has actually three different funds on it. Um, this is the PD240 fund for bulletproof vest program that they're in the Ordinance Violation Fund and the Criminal Investigations Funds. Those are local home rule funds that we only um, usually budget $10,000 a year, but they would like to spend more than that. This isn't tax money or anything. It's a home rule fund, so. Okay. okay. Any questions up here? Any questions from the audience? Okay, you're welcome. Holland? Yes. Gustin? Yes. Lee? Yes. Ramsey? Yes. Langwell? Yes. Krauskopf? Yes. The motion passes. <laughs> Next we have Ordinance 17, 2019. Ordinance 17, 2019, an ordinance for additional appropriations for the Peru Public Library. Move we adopt Ordinance 17, 2019. Second. It's been moved by Councilman Krauskopf and seconded by Councilman Lee to adopt Ordinance 17, 2019. So we have a lot of representatives from the library. Would you like to mm. talk a little bit about it? What we're going to do with the extra money? Um, you need to come up to the microphone so that everybody listening at home can hear you. With the magic of television. <laughs> uh, the $50,000 that we're asking for is from the money the $75,000 that the county paid for county cards. And it is not in our budget at the present time, um, but it is money that we now have put into a savings account that we are asking to appropriate for maintenance to the building, um, upgraded windows, upgraded electric, landscaping, the um, heating and air conditioning system maintenance and upkeep, and general building upkeep of the original library building. Okay, so this is money that the county uh, generated from the additional library cards, okay, and then it was it was uh, transferred to the city? Yeah, it was transferred to the library. They the paid, library. They paid for uh, 1,000 okay. library cards. Okay. And since it's, since we're in charge of the library, they'd like to spend their money. So you don't want, huh? Sounds fair? Sounds fair. Sounds fair. Yes. Thank you. Any questions up here? Nope. 
Any questions from the audience? Okay, roll call. Holland? Yes. Gustin? Yes. Lee? Yes. Ramsey? Yes. Langwell? Yes. Krauskopf? Yes. The motion passes. Next, we have Ordinance 18, 2019. Ordinance 18, 2019, an ordinance establishing salaries and wages of the civil city employees and appointees for the year 2020. Move to adopt Ordinance 18, 2019. Second. It's been moved by Councilman Crosscoff and seconded by Councilman Langwell to adopt Ordinance 18, 2019. And that's what we talked about with the budget meeting. We had a budget hearing last week, and uh, we did not have any remonstrators. Um, so this is establishing the wages for the um, employees and appointees for 2020. Any questions from the audience? Any further up here? It's a quiet bunch. Uh, roll call. Holland? Yes. Gustin? Yes. Lee? Yes. Ramsey? Yes. Langwell? Yes. Krauskopf? Yes. The motion passes. Next, we have Ordinance 19, 2019. Ordinance 19, 2019, an ordinance establishing the 2020 annual salaries for all elected officials of the City of Crewe, Indiana. Move we adopt Ordinance 19, 2019. Second. Uh, it's moved by Councilman Krotzkoff, second by Councilman Ramsey, uh, to adopt Ordinance 19, 2000, I'm sorry, yeah, Ordinance 19, 2019. Okay. Same as the previous ordinance, this is just for the elected officials for next year. Questions? No? All right, roll call. Holland? Yes. Gustin? Yes. Lee? Yes. Ramsey? Yes. Langwell? Yes. Krauskopf? Yes. Okay, motion passes. Uh, next we have Ordinance 21, 2019. Ordinance 21, 2019, an ordinance for additional appropriations and excuse me, an ordinance for appropriations and tax rates for the 2020 budget. Move we adopt Ordinance 21, 2019. Second. It's by Councilman Crosscoff and seconded by Councilman Lee to adopt Ordinance 21, 2019. This is establishing the rest of the budget for 2020. And obviously if we're establishing a budget, then the tax rates would correspond to raise those funds. Any questions? Up here. Roll call. Holland? Yes. Gustin? Yes. Lee? Yes. Ramsey? Yes. Langwell? Yes. Krauskopf? Yes. The motion passes. And we have, uh, we have to sign this, so I'll pass it this way and then pass it back down this way, please. Be sure to check that. If you voted I, or not nay. Mark. And now it's uh, we can move on to new business. Uh, we're going to move uh, the last item on new business, the interlocal agreement, the city of Peru in Miami County, in the Miami County's prosecutor's office, uh, to the front of uh, new business. That's what microwaves are for. Office. 
um, the prosecutor's office took all that responsibility and duty back. That way they could keep the funds in-house. Um, in doing it, switching this allows us to have more freedom of the monies generated because the way it was set up is the money from the deferral programs in the past would be applied to police funds even though they're managed and held by the prosecutor's office. I have a question. I thought we were talking about the economic development department. No, we moved it. We moved the, this to the front. Oh, we're in the back. Okay. No, you guys. <laughs> he wanted to move it to the front because he has to go somewhere. Oh, okay. you know, that's why we're in the interval program. That's why we're going to miss that. Okay. Okay. Keep going. Sorry, Joe. No, you're fine. Mm -hmm. It's his birthday. He wants to leave early. I mean, my wife scheduled a uh, dinner that I didn't know about that was supposed to be a surprise at six. So. <laughs> surprise! <laughs> <laughs> so, um, we, the, uh, the police department wants to play a larger role in offering these uh, deferrals for traffic, minor traffic violations and whatnot. And the way we had set up with the prosecutor's office now is any funds collected um, between 10000 or for the first $10,000 collected, we would split the funds 50-50. Um, for any funds collected between the amounts of $10,000 to $20,000, um, we would split 60-40 in favor of the PPD. And then for any funds in excess of $20,000, we would split in favor of our Peru Police Department 70-30. Um, so it's going to hopefully and ideally generate more money and the police budget. I know at one point Chief Meeks had informed me that they used to have or generate about $100,000 a year from these deferral programs, and that was cut from their budget because the prosecutor's office wanted that money back and wanted it on their own. <coughs> Thankfully, um, good um, working relationship with the prosecutor's office now, and I think it'll be a big benefit to the police department because the way it is now, if we want these funds or want to purchase something with some of the funds generated, we would have to go request that to the prosecutor's office and then they have the final say. I mean, under the state law, the money the prosecutor's office collects doesn't specify that they have to buy the police items, but that's what it's intended for. Um, so now we'll have a little more freedom with that. It's been nine years in the process. Yeah. Hasn't been easy. No, and, and uh, I'd like to speak in favor as well. The, the the only thing I had questioned originally was, you know, you have this tiered system, so it makes it sound like it creates a quota, right? Over ten thousand dollars, and we start to get more money generated from that. Um, but I was assured by the chief that there would be no. Uh, quotas, and I want to just make this statement right. so that it's it's reassured to the community that it's not a quota-based system. They're not going to be using this to overly pull people over just to get their next quota and that, and that hit that next bar. So, right. but it is something to help us generate funds uh, where we struggled to get those funds before. The way it is now is if we would have no incentive to try to push people to do a deferral program if they get a ticket um, because we can't solicit those because ultimately it falls on the prosecutor, in, which it still does now. However, with this agreement, the prosecutor will come to City Hall once a, once a week, once every other week, and sign uh, deferral programs and whatnot. He'll ultimately still sign off on them, but we know the criteria and who's going to be eligible, and we can solicit those. Um, and the way it is now, Say if this say if there were ten thousand dollars generated from the deferral programs offered by the county, um, we would get a very de minimis portion of that. And if ten thousand, if this goes into effect, then of that ten thousand, we're getting back half. So yes, it'll be beneficial. And, and for the money is what people pay in order to keep from having to have a. Points on their license. Points on their license. Right. Yeah. Right. Any questions from the audience? Any further questions up here? 
just just semantics. If you look at um, page two, three, uh, paragraphs two and three, it's it's spelled out properly. But in both two and three, you listed the prosecutor's office and then the PPD, and then it was sixty forty, and then you went back and said if it was forty sixty and thirty seventy, then it would follow as to how the paragraph is written. You know, you know what I'm saying? It says the prosecutor's office will be 60-40, but then you come back and say the PPD will get 60%. So if it's 40-60, the prosecutor, it would be, it'd be in the same order as as the as the, as the um, two uh, ent ent entities in the paragraph. That's all I was saying. Because when I first read it, I was, I was saying, okay, the prosecutor's going to get 60%, but then they came back and said, the prosecutor's going to get because the prosecutor See, I mean, listed it first. And right. it, it seems like if, yeah, if they're going to be listed right. first, they are, the percentage they get ought to be listed first, and, and the PPD ought to get. So I don't care whether you switch it around and list PPD and prosecutors and flip them over. The legal sense of a matter. 64. I don't know. I'm just. Right. right. That's, that's funny because I know there's been four different attorneys' eyes on this. The county's <laughs> attorney and I, both the, are the prosecutor and his deputy prosecutor. And, just one of those things that we weren't looking at it from that perspective. I'm a math guy, what can I say? Right. I just, it right. just seems like it should flow as to... Yes, right. I agree. Okay. Yeah. So if you make that change, I'll be happy to go for it. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, somebody later on is going to come back and say, no, wait a minute. It, yeah. it clarifies, though. I know. Yeah. I know. But, but it just... Mm. Right. Yeah. Then you heard? No. Okay, roll call. Holland? Yes. Gustin? Yes. Lee? Yes. Ramsey? Yes. Langwell? Yes. Krauskopf? Yes. <coughs> The motion passes. Well, since we have such a nice audience here, I think it has to be a very nice time for us to yeah. sing happy birthday to our birthday <laughs> boy. As he lives, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you, young pup. Happy birthday, dear Dustin. Happy birthday to you. Thank you, Tom. <laughs> All right. Um, your, your wife just called and said send you home. <laughs> I got to <laughs> All right. We'll move on to uh, new business. Um, I guess we already have moved on to new business. We'll go to Ordinance 22, 2019. Ordinance 22, 2019, an ordinance of the City of Peru's Common Council creating an economic development department. Why do we consider Ordinance 22, 2019? Second. It's been moved by Councilman Crosscock and second by Councilman Gustin to consider Ordinance 22, 2019. Roll call. Holland? Yes. Gustin? Yes. Lee? Yes. Ramsey? Yes. Langwell? Yes. Crosscock? Yes. Move we adopt Ordinance 22, 2019. Second. It's been moved by Councilman Crosscock and second by Councilman Gustin to adopt Ordinance 22, 2019. Is this not what we did three months ago? Yeah, yes. Ten? Yes. Okay. So what are we doing now? Well, we're doing it on the part of the city. What we did before was on the part of the county. Okay. But sure. Why don't you come up and entertain us? That's a, it's a hard act to follow. You know. He's got his dad sing to you, John. Look at that. We can, we can probably sing something to you, too. I'm glad, I'm glad we could accommodate so you could get out there and laugh. That's the so, no, and thank you for the opportunity to be here tonight. And you're right. We did this about three months ago. Yeah. Uh, but we did it with the county because we were anticipating a project that's going to be, we still believe it's happening out at Wilson with the shell building out there. But because this particular project that we're bringing or we think is going to happen is within the city limits, there's a requirement then for the city to create this economic development uh, department um, as it has the power to do that within the city limits um, um, of where the project's going to take place. So that's what we're considering tonight is Ordinance 22. It's pretty much the same format that the county did uh, for the other project where by statute there's a three-member board uh, that the mayor uh, selects mm -hmm. an appointment, the county council makes a nomination, and the city council makes a nomination uh, to the mayor. But it's the mayor's uh, appointees for this three-member board. 
And again, this is not to, this is not doing away with the Miami County Economic Development Authority, um, but the powers of this Economic Development Department that you're creating are, are pretty specific as it relates to the state statutes, whereby what they're going to do is look at certain um, incentives uh, that we may be offering in this particular case uh, project that we believe is going to happen out in the Broadway landing area. And they're going to hold a public hearing. Uh, they're going to evaluate the project. They're going to uh, act as an independent commission between the Economic Development Authority and this, this body to make a recommendation to this body of whether that level of incentive is needed uh, to, to help promote this type of a project. And so specifically in this case, we're talking about tax incremental financing funds or TIF funds. And so what will happen is once this three-member board is established um, and it's uh, the um, appointees are made, uh, they will conduct a public hearing. Uh, they will evaluate the project and then they'll provide a written report uh, back to this board or to this council for their consideration in approving uh, a particular incentive package or not. Okay. So, and I think you've already done it, but we're asking you to tonight consider and adopt. Yes, you say that. It's, 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 there's, no, there's no money right. uh, it's being appropriated, so it's fine to do that. So, and our hope is that um, we can get all the appointments and everything made before your next city council meeting. So, at that city council meeting in November, then we'd be bringing the actual project uh, to you for your evaluation and approval. Okay. Thank How's you. the one out the base coming, okay? Good. We're close. Close? On closing, yes, sir. Good. Thank you. Good, good. Thank you. Any questions for Mr. Tim? Do I understand what we're doing? Mm -hmm. Any questions, audience? Thank you. I'll, uh, roll call. Holland? Yes. Dustin? Yes. Lee? Yes. Ramsey? Yes. Langwell? Yes. Crosscock? Yes. The motion passes. Okay. Next, we have. Okay. Now, um, do, 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 Mr. Tit. Yes, sir. Now that we've established this, when we need to appoint people right away? Yes, uh, we do. And that could be uh, done at this meeting, if you so like, or uh, there will be a form letter that I'll provide you that if you want to um, pass it around to the other council members and come up with a recommendation. That well, we need to do something so that you can bring it to the next meeting, right? Right. When do you want to do your uh, appointments? Appointment. You got it. You've got one. It's going to be selected by you. Right. Uh, the Miami County Council. Have they discussed anything yet? No. Uh, uh, okay. And we haven't either, obviously. Right. right. Well, we have to do that in a public hearing, yes. Mm -hmm. Do we have? Do we, no, have to we can do it here. Right. Which is a public. I'm saying, do, no. do we have to make that appointment in a in a public hearing? Um, well, the council has to make a recommendation, and I don't know if that is a, I don't think that's a necessary formal. You make a recommendation, you make a recommendation to the mayor, then he, he makes the actual appointment. <coughs> You're making a recommendation on who you want as the council's mm -hmm. representative on this commission, but the appointment itself is actually made by the mayor. He's also going to, that's in addition to his one he's selecting? Yes. Okay. Um, so are these on a three, two, one year? Yes. So will the first one expire at the end of 19? Yes, and that would be the council's, and then this one. it would work backwards, just the opposite okay. from what the counties did. So the mayor's appointment would be for the full three-year term. Yep. The city council's appointment, or your recommendation, the mayor appoints that would be for the two-year, and then the county's appointment, if he so choose to. Our nomination, if he so chose to put that person on, that would be for one year then. Ending December 31st of 19? Yes. Okay. And the second one would be 20, and then the third one's 21? Yes. Okay. So it's not a three, full, full three years because of the time we're adopting it? Right. Okay. But they can be renewed each sure. year should they still want to serve. Okay. Okay. Do I have any questions? Yeah. 
any volunteers? No. I'll do it. There is your volunteer. Anybody else want to? I'll volunteer. Well, we only need one. Uh, oh, okay. Well, then let him do it for a second. All right. <laughs> yeah. Mr. Mayor, we recommend uh, yeah. Wayne Holland be appointed. Okay. I'll accept okay. that uh, recommendation. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. There you go. Thank You're hired. Thanks. Uh, next, we have Ordinance 23, 2019. Ordinance 23, 2019, an ordinance to amend the city approved code of ordinance subsection 151.076A10 and subsection 151.076A11. Move we consider ordinance 23, 2019. Second. Let's put the council in cross second by councilman to adopt or consider ordinance 23, 2019. Roll call. Holland? Yes. Gustin? Yes. Lee? Yes. Ramsey? Yes. Langwell? Yes. Crosscop? Yes. Move we adopt Ordinance 23, 2019. <coughs> Second. It's been by Councilman Crosscop and seconded by Councilman Holland to adopt Ordinance 23, 2019. Susie, come up and tell us what we're doing. Okay, on our parking space ordinance, when the businesses come in, every one of them has to come through zoning board of appeals. Um, we have just a simple change in there on those two sections for one parking space per 200 square feet of gross space instead of 100 square feet. And it would cover nine out of the 10 that have came through since I've been in position. It's, it's more reasonable, basically. That is more reasonable. <laughs> yeah. How does that deal with the um, businesses located on Broadway? Those are already existing businesses. These are for new builds. Okay. So, oh. uh, for new. Yeah. Okay. So when someone comes in, new building, like, say, the O'Reilly, we just put in a variance form. We have 34 spaces. Per the way the ordinance was written, when we put that through, they would have had to have 72. It's kind of silly. That's I don't think 72 people are buying auto parts at one time. Right. That's how most of them were they were coming through. So. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Steph. Okay. Anybody have any? Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Um, at the bottom of the first part of that. Yeah. I may be wrong. So How can you talk in your microphone? Does that say form, should it be formally or formally that it says? Form, formally read as. Okay. I believe. Because it isn't formally until we, isn't formally until we adopt it. So formally is how it is. Okay. Right here. Because <laughs> yeah. I thought it meant the way it was listed. That makes more sense. sense. So it is formal. I know. I don't know. Formal. It's formal. Like it's calm. Right. She's asking. Oh, no, that. Yeah. No, I'm like the, the 100 to 200. Yeah. So this will cover, and, and this will paragraph 11. That'll, nobody is going to have any issues with that downtown with the eating and drinking establishments. Everybody should be covered. That are existing there now. No, I mean they, they already don't follow the ordinance. There are existing businesses <laughs> there on Broadway, so. Not a whole lot they can I do. I mean, we're making it lighter, not harder. Okay. So. Yeah. I mean, it's it easier. Places coming oh, out so it's, it actually says it 200. It says 100 right now. Right uh, now it says one space per 100 square feet. Okay. Of building space. Right. We're changing it to one space per 200 <laughs> square right. feet. Oh. So it cuts it in half. Okay. Like two halves, you know? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It'll be 100. All of <coughs> 200, is what the, 200 is what the new ordinance will be. Right. One spot per 200. Right. Okay. 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 Any other questions? You're welcome. Holland? Yes. Gustin? Yes. Lee? Yes. Ramsey? Yes. Langwell? Yes. Krauskopf? Yes. Okay. The motion passes. Next, we have resolution 14, 2019. 
Resolution 14, 2019, a resolution of the City of Peru City Council to establish a five-member airport board. Move we consider Resolution 14, 2019. Second. Speaking of Councilman Crosscoff and second by Councilman Gustin to consider Resolution 14, 2019. Roll call. Yes. Gustin. Yes. Lee. Yes. Ramsey. Yes. Langwell. Yes. Crosscoff. Yes. As we adopt Resolution 14, 2019. Second. It's been moved by Councilman Crosscoff and second by Councilman Dustin to adopt Resolution 14, 2019. Mr. Clary, I see you're interested back there. Would you like to come up and enlighten us, please? <laughs> We're asking to, we currently have a four-member board and have operated with a four-member board, I think, since the airport was probably established. We have discussed from time to time to maybe having that expanded to a five-member board. It gives you an odd number of people if right. the event you have a tiebreaker, which is a very rare occasion that that might happen. Um, but more recently, we do have one of our members that's going to have to be away for a period of time. And so that'll take us down to three people who actually can operate. If one person's sick or on vacation, we cannot do business. Right. So by having five, we could have two away and still have a quorum and conduct business. So that's the driver behind it. Questions? Roll call. Roll call. Well played. Holland? Yes. Oh, he's going to call yeah, I was just joking. Oh. I'm sorry. Oh, Jim did. <laughs> <laughs> I like the inside deal. My husband's making her dinner, too. Um, any, further, any, any questions for Jim? Okay. When is your meeting? When is your meeting? Right. Oh, yeah, the second, or first Tuesday of the month. First Tuesday of the month. They take you about 5,000 about 5, feet, and everybody parachutes out, and we have the meeting while we're descending. <laughs> <laughs> Real quick. I'd like to get high. <laughs> 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 business is conducted. Uh, Roll call. Holland. Yes. Gustin. Yes. Lee. Yes. Ramsey. Yes. Langwell. Yes. Krauskopf. Yes. Okay. The motion passes. Uh, yes. Did you want to introduce uh, Mark Ramsey? Yeah. He was at the last uh, special, he was at the hearing, but this is the first city council meeting he's been at. And Correct. It was mentioned to me that we didn't introduce Mark. There you are. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Ramsey was appointed as a, as a uh, right. uh, city council person to replace Terry Alley, who uh, had to resign uh, last month. And so uh, Mark's been to two um, public hearings, but he has not been to, uh, this is his first official city council. So. Thank you for taking it easy on him tonight and not asking a lot too many tough questions. That was good. Welcome, welcome. Anything further? Might be a great journey. Well, there is a movement. Second. 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 All those in favor, aye. 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 We won't.